In one of the previous videos we talked about how Andromeda Galaxy one day is going to actually collide with the Milky Way Galaxy. In other words, our galaxy and Andromeda are going to either become one or possibly destroy each other. They might actually completely disintegrate or might join into one mega galaxy and this will happen at some point uh, within the next three to four billion years. Now what I haven't really talked about is what would actually happen to our solar system. We've discussed the possibility of a collision of uh, at, at least one star uh, when these two galaxies um, visit each other and the pr probability of uh, any star collision is actually relatively low. But nevertheless, there is actually a probability that at least one of these stars will pass within uh, a few astronomical units of our solar system and uh, this may cause some kind of a effect on our solar system. So let's actually take a look at that and let's see what happens when at least one of these stars decides to pass by within the vicinity of our solar system. Welcome to What The Math. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a normal solar system and we're actually just going to launch another solar system and uh, have it pass by within a few astronomical units um, of our sun. But before we do this, let's actually clean this up a little bit because otherwise things will be a little bit too slow. I'm going to erase all the particles, all of the dust. I'm also going to get rid of some of the smaller objects that are not actually that beneficial for the simulation. And we're only going to keep the main bodies here, including Vesta and Ceres, because they're uh, they're not going to affect anything here. So what we'll do is uh, let's actually launch um, another sun, another solar system from a distance of approximately 60 to 70 astronomical units. Now, there's a chance that at least one of the stars will actually pass that close to us. And in one of the future videos, I'll try to explain the math behind this. Uh, but so what we'll do now is we'll launch um, another solar system going this way in this direction and it will pass by our sun, but not very close to it. And we're going to observe what happens to the solar system. So to do this, uh, we're going to launch at a speed of about 100 kilometers per second, which is probably what the speed is going to be when these stars actually pass by uh, each other. And it, it might even be higher than that. It might actually be 200 kilometers per second or even higher. Uh, because uh, when these two galaxies come close to each other, they'll be moving uh, at really high relative velocities which means that if the star passes by here, it will be really, really fast. So we're going to do the following. We're going to click on the whole system here. And what this will do is add the entire system as soon as we click on the button. And here we go. So uh, we've just added another solar system. I'm just going to once again clean it up a little bit so that it doesn't slow down my game. And what we'll do is we're going to remove everything except for the main uh, heaviest bodies. And the way I'm doing this is basically by control selecting everything, then zooming in on the central body, in this case it's Uranus, and then holding shift and clicking right mouse button. And this will actually um, unselect it. And then you can just click delete and erase all of the uh, other bodies at the same time. And it looks like we've erased everything that we didn't need. And so hopefully now we'll be able to accelerate our game a little bit. And so, all right, so, okay, objects are flying away everywhere. That's not good. I don't think these planets are going to be orbiting around the new sun, uh, which is not exactly what I wanted, but that's okay too. Anyway, the sun is still headed in this direction, and this is sun number two. Let's actually rename it into sun number two. And uh, so let's just go to our original solar system, zoom in to Earth and just observe what happens to it. So uh, we're going to look at its temperature, which is currently 15.6 degrees Celsius and increasing because there's another sun coming toward us. And we're also going to be looking at its orbital um, parameters. So here, eccentricity is important. It's currently 0.02. Uh, also things like, like inclination, uh, which is 0.003 right now. Um, and of course, orbital period, which is 365 days. Now let's see if this other sun, sun number two, which is right there, uh, changes anything. Let's see if it changes our orbital elements or our average temperature, which is uh, at around 15 degrees to about 16 degrees right now. 
Now, as the sun number two approaches us, uh, you'll notice that uh, our inclination starts to change just a little bit. Now, this is not a huge effect, uh, but it may affect our climates a little bit um, and may even influence the way that our Earth uh, spins around its axes. Uh, because our tilt might actually get shifted a little bit. Uh, we're currently at 0 0.004, which is not a big change, but it's a change not, nevertheless. And what this means is that uh, our uh, inclination in comparison to our original plane of orbit has changed a little bit. It's actually 0 0.005 now and still increases. Uh, and uh, so sun number two, even though it's quite far away, it might actually have some effect on our planet Earth. And uh, temperature here has increased to about 16, I think. Yeah, 16 degrees. So the temperature has increased by about anywhere between 0.5 to 1 degrees. And uh, as it passes by in the same plane, it's going to basically ha have some sort of a uh, some sort of effect on our orbit, I think. All right, so yes, only the inclination. Uh, only inclination changed, the eccentricity is staying the same. And I think as it passes by, let's actually take a look at how far away it is from us. Uh, let's see. So this is about 50-ish astronomical units, which is actually quite possible in real life as well. And so at, at this point, um, we might experience some effect. And obviously our sun will also change its direction a little bit. As you can see, it's moving away in this direction, which means that um, the gravity of a sun number two is attracting it and causing it to move a little bit. Uh, but other than that, um, except for this little effect that we got uh, from the change of plane of orbit, uh, nothing really changed. Uh, the planets that were with sun number two are still coming toward us. So they might have some effect, uh, but chances are they're not going to do much. Uh, only the star will have the most effect here. Those planets, unless they pass by really close, which is actually uh, very, very, very um, improbable, it's very unlikely um, that they'll pass close to our planet. Um, so yes, except for the star, those, those planets will not really have any effect on us. So the main difference between the original Earth and this new Earth is the inclination. So our plane changed just a little bit and uh, everything else stayed the same. The climate here is just a little bit warmer, or maybe not even that warmer. Um, it, I think it was just uh, as it is right now. It uh, changes between 14.9 uh, and I think 16 degrees Celsius. So if a main sequence orange star, which are actually very, very common in both galaxies, both Andromeda and Milky Way galaxy, if this kind of a star passes by within... Um, 50 to 70 or even more astronomical units uh, from our planet, it will not really change much. So in other words, nothing to worry about. All right, so let's try this again with uh, a star that passes by a little bit closer. Now, oh, and as you can see, those other planets actually are flying in a completely different direction. So uh, adding all of them was, uh, I think was a bit of a mistake. So we're going to do this a little bit different now. This time we're actually just going to launch a star itself and possibly a few gas giants with it just to have the most possible effect. And uh, we're going to do this at a distance of about Neptune. So this is approximately 30 astronomical units from the star. And there's actually a very low chance that any star will even pass this close to our sun. Um, there's, I think, less than 10% chance that any star will even make this close to us. So this is a very unlikely event, but if it happens, uh, this is what's going to occur. So let's launch a sun right in this direction. Then we're going to zoom out a little bit and launch a gas giant number one and a gas giant number two. Now I just launched Uranus and Neptune as well. So basically we're just launching the star and the gas giants. And let's see what happens because this will hopefully recreate this a little bit more accurately. So we have our uh, sun number two coming a little bit closer to our solar system and bringing with it four um, quite massive gas giants as well. So let's zoom in on Earth again and observe the change in eccentricity, inclination, and also temperature. Um, climate is right here. So we're currently between 15 degrees Celsius or 14.9 degrees Celsius uh, and the maximum temperature of Let's see how high it gets. I think it's 15.7. So in the last simulation, it was about 0.3 degrees higher. Here, it's uh, this is what the original temperature was. And so 
we're going to be looking at eccentricity inclination and of course orbital period and let's see what happens so sun number two will pass by closer and bring with it uh, gas giants as well and as it passes by, inclination has started increasing again a lot faster than before, obviously, because it's passing by a lot closer to us. Um, and we might even experience some other changes here. Let's see if it does anything else to our planet. And looks like that's really the only effect that it will have on us. So once again, the inclination changed because uh, this star is coming from this direction. So it kind of changed the uh, the way our plane is located. Before it was kind of flat. Now it's at an inclination of 0.10. Uh, but let's actually wait and see what those other gas giants do to us as well. They might have some other effect. And uh, let's see if uh, anything happened to any other planet. It looks like no other planet disappeared, which is good. Uh, Neptune is still here. Uranus is still here. I think Uranus actually uh, changed its orbit a little bit because it has all of these gas giants pulling in it and, uh, as well as the sun number two. So this planet right here might have the most change in orbit. Uh, but for our Earth, it still has pretty much the same thing it had in the last simulation. And its temperature is just the same as it was in simulation number one, uh, possibly even uh, lower. Let's see if it gets to 60. No, look at that. It stops at... Oh, no, never mind. So, yes, it gets to 16 degrees. So, uh, it's exactly the same as it was in the last simulation. So, even if a star passes by within 30 astronomical units of our uh, sun, uh, or I guess our planet Earth, uh, nothing major will happen to it. So it will really only have a slight change in orbit, which will most likely affect the way climates are on Earth, but not dramatically. So there will definitely be some change, but not a dramatic change in climates. Okay, so let's do this last time, but this time we're going to have it pass really close. And this time we're going to launch another star at a distance of approximately two to three astronomical units from the sun and this is a very very unlikely event uh, so this will be between mars and jupiter and uh, for this to happen it has to be a something like one in a thousand chance which is quite unlikely uh, but it, it might happen and so what we're going to do is simulate that by launching another sun right here and then taking a few gas giants and doing the same to them. And here they come. So we have Sun 2, Uranus 2, Neptune 2, Saturn and Jupiter 2 as well. Uh, so right away, look at that inclination changing dramatically. It's just skyrocketing. Um, our orbital period is changing as well. And look at that. Holy cow. This is, this is interesting. I think uh, I should have slowed down time a little bit. But I believe our temperature now is increasing because sun number two was actually relatively close to our, our um, planet. So it did increase the temperature as well. Uh, and all of these other planets coming toward us are basically shifting everyone around. Um, our planet has changed its eccentricity. It changes inclination by one degrees. And uh, basically everything has changed. Our orbital period is now 1.2 years, 1.3 years almost. Um, and I think this is going to be a very new solar system once these uh, planets and sun number two fly away from us. Uh, there's a very ch high chance that um, our Earth will be unrecognizable. There is probably going to be a very different temperature. And I think I have a feeling that we might even lose some planets. Uh, oh, okay, Neptune 2 flew the other way because it bounced off something. And where is... Let, let's see if we lost anything. Do we still have Mars? Mars is still here. Uh, Venus is still here. Mercury, Ceres. I think we lost Vesta. Vesta's gone. And our Jupiter is still here. Our Saturn is still here. Uranus and Neptune are still here. Okay, so except for our own planet, um, everything else seems to be okay, but look at that. Look at our temperature now. It is ridiculously low. Um, because our orbital period has increased so much, this will now become a snowball Earth, probably. I'm going to just show you what this looks like. So look at that. This is what the new Earth would look like. It's essentially winter. Winter everywhere. Most of Turkey is covered in snow, and we even have snow in Iraq and Iran, which is pretty unusual, but um, I think... At, look at that, the temperature is still decreasing. As the temperature keeps decreasing, we'll actually most likely experience 
a snowball earth yep there we go africa and south america everything is essentially snow uh, and this is because our orbital period is 1.28 years our um, earth has a very high eccentricity now and its inclination has changed dramatically as well so basically this is the new face of our solar system um, we have let me just accelerate time a little bit so we can see it a little bit better enable orbits so you can actually see what they look like so earth orbit is very eccentric uh, and we now even have Ceres which actually seems to cross our orbit so one day we might even collide with Ceres and essentially this is what the new earth looks like so yes unfortunately if there is a star that passes by within three to four astronomical units of our solar system um, it will very likely shift our planet's orbit uh, quite dramatically and we might experience a complete change in climate uh, so here we have a snowball earth because it unfortunately has a very eccentric orbit with an orbital period of 1.3 years and our temperature is still decreasing whoa that is crazy okay so that's essentially what will happen if one day a star decides to visit and pass by really close to our solar system and just to finish this let's uh, just for fun do it one last time just with the sun itself and we're going to launch it at really high speed about really really close to our sun between mercury and sun and let's just see what happens so we're just going to observe this from uh, this angle and let's just see what occurs uh, i think the sun number two is coming there we go look at that look at this beauty it passes by really fast very close to our sun and i believe this yeah this changes things again um our temperature increased uh, because there was a second sun but it will now probably start decreasing because our orbital period is now 1.8 years um so once again our orbit has changed dramatically and we'll very likely have a frozen earth in a second and so what I gathered from this simulation is that no matter what happens when Andromeda and uh, Milky Way come close together, if there is a star that passes by relatively close to our star or to our solar system, we might experience a change in orbit and we might actually end up with a really, really, really cold Earth. But the chance for this happening is actually relatively low. And in one of the future videos, I'm going to try to show it to you how to use math to calculate the chance of one of these stars actually coming that close to our sun. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this little simulation and hopefully you enjoyed me turning our Earth into a snowball. Thank you so much for watching and check out some of the other Universe Sandbox 2 videos and also subscribe to the channel if you still haven't. Like this video and show it to your friends. Thank you so much and game you later guys. Bye bye.